You must be bored. This is a phrase that rings in my head many times when I make something. You know when a lie is rooted in you and it takes diligence to uproot that lie and replace it with truth? I think it started when I was in high school and middle school. I would always be making things and have heard the response, you must have been really bored to have made that many, many times. I'm thankful I've had an inner drive and many other positive voices in my life to not listen to those responses, but it still doesn't take away the fact that it creeps in sometimes. Now, the irony is, I am on a mission to teach and protect my children's boredom in a world of instant access and gratification. Why? Because I, I am easily sucked in by instant gratification and numbing out from scrolling or constant lifeless entertainment. And I have benefited greatly from where that boredom leads. It leads to creativity, new ideas, trial and erroring things when it's more satisfying when you went the long route, seeing the satisfaction of trying new things, new skills, creative home, joy, and even getting to share art with others. Boredom is the beginning of creativity and problem solving. And I want to continue to practice that muscle so it can grow. Do you ever stop and think of all the beauty that others have deposited into the world? Whether it be a song, a painting, even a little library stand for book exchanges. What if those people said, no thanks, and didn't follow that creative nudge that comes after boredom sets in? I think life would be less colorful, meaningful, and less beautiful. Plus, we would be without some of our favorite things. Boredom is a gift that produces other gifts to bring flourishing to the world. I love this quote by Nicholas Cardaris. Let children experience boredom. There is nothing healthier for a child than to learn how to use their own interior resources to work through the challenges of being bored. This then acts as fertile ground for developing their powers of observation, cultivating patience, and developing an active imagination, the most developmentally important skill they can learn. I love that this talks about self as well, because I feel like boredom is now a discipline that has to be practiced and strengthened because it's so easy to bypass. Here is a question for you. How do you protect your boredom? What do you do when you're bored? What is that thing that you usually gravitate towards? I hope for me and for you, the next time you are tempted to opt out of boredom, You sit with the uncomfortableness of it and follow where it leads.
Here is a quick tip. I like to keep a running note of things to do for the next time that I'm bored. Whether that is organizing a closet, making something, drawing, doodling, having a paper pad beside me at all times to write. I think each decision to be bored matters and it all adds up to a beautiful, creative, fulfilling life that might not be seen by many others, but the important thing is what it's doing in you and what it's exemplifying to those around us. I hope you embrace the gift of boredom and see where it leads.